Welcome to Twisted Monday. Closing out another month with Twisted Metal Black. You're actually really far away from the end of the month. Next month has five Mondays, so it's going to be an extra long time before we see Black again. But uh, to celebrate, I'm playing one of the least interesting vehicles in the game, Junkyard Dog. Least interesting doesn't mean bad. We're going to have a good time with Junkyard Dog. No question there. But he's not having a good time. He has anger management issues. Uh, and a lot of problems. And he's very violent. Let's find out how violent. Let's, uh, real quick, take a look at his manual entry. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, it's actually pretty different from his in-game model. That big chin is less represented in his dying moments during the character select screen. Most of the characters were redesigned in their final designs. So, Billy Ray, simple farmer. That's how uninteresting his whole backstory is. Married his high school sweetheart. He was out checking those cornfields. Looking like that crop was going to be even more impressive than usual. Might even have some extra cash to buy that fancy ring his wife wants so much. She deserves it, doesn't she? And Billy Ray's vehicle. It's a rundown tow truck that helps him earn a second income. At night, along the country road, he tows stranded motorists to the local mechanic for repairs. What a nice guy. And then they have to be really fancy in describing his special, which is just a gas can. <laughs> so, ridiculously simple vehicle. Another good look at him. His mouth is placed appropriately on his face, unlike in his final design. Let's remind ourselves what his story's like in the opening cutscene that tells us absolutely nothing about Billy Ray Stillwell. They took everything from me. Then they put me in this hole. So I could sit and think all day long about what I'd lost. My freedom, my wife, even my pride. It was hard to know which one I missed the most. Sometimes when I'm locked up, I swore I heard the man with the plane coming back to get me. But none of it was real. It was just my head going to mush. But then, one day, I had a visitor. And that's when everything changed. He said his name was Calypso. He ran some kind of weird contest, and he was looking for people like me to be a part of it. He told me if I won, I could have the one thing my heart desired. I may be no rocket scientist, but I know opportunity when I see it. That pilot had taken a piece of my life and twisted it all around. How could I refuse the chance for revenge? Lots of foreshadowing, no actual information about Billy. What he's done, or what he wants. But now we know he wants revenge. This short blurb has given us more information than the entire cutscene did. Revenge and his old face. Let's, uh, hope that Calypso is in a real giving mood and gives him two wishes. But we all know how this turns out. Voice acting was, uh, very strong, I'll say. I don't know who Billy's voice actor is. But they do, like, a sad, pathetic hillbilly and, like, a creepy, enraged madman. And they shift between them kind of seamlessly. It's not exactly perfect, but it's not a very juicy role, and they do a lot with it. So, props there. There's our special. A spiked ball, which we can inexplicably control to crash into the ground. 
furthermore, I am completely unsure as to why Junkyard Dog is the first vehicle on the vehicle select list. It's not special, it's brand new, so no one has any familiarity with this vehicle. It's pretty basic. It's actually a good starting vehicle. Maybe they balanced it in that way. But it's certainly not alphabetical, nor are any of the names on the list. So, weird choice that it gets highlighted in that way. I assume they have a selection process that is similar to my own when deciding what I'm going to play through on Twisted Monday. It makes sense to me, but I couldn't explain it if I tried. My understanding is that Twitch notifications are really, really unreliable. So we're all lucky that anyone ever gets to show off of these streams. Ah well, there's always the archives, in case anyone actually misses them entirely. I'm not worried about this first level with any character in the game. Basically anybody can get through this one, no problem. I do need to do this one in endurance mode sometime. There's a unlockable level if you get 15 kills in this level. In endurance mode, there's a repeated series of one-on-one -on -one battles. I showed it off in Small Brawl, but I believe this game debuted endurance mode. It's now a somewhat common feature of the series. And in this game in Small Brawl, it has unlockables tied to it. Our special isn't exactly a gas can. I don't believe there's a bullseye bonus, which is the main thing that makes gas cans really good. However, our special always does like really high damage comparable to a bullseye bonus. So it's a fair trade-off. Not only do I have to do less aiming, I get more damage on average. And I go for multiple hits more frequently. Large groups of enemies in this game tend to line up so as to allow multiple hits. Still didn't get the jet fatality. I'm gonna shoot down the plane in every playthrough and hope that it lands on somebody. Because if it does, I've been told there's unique text that pops up on screen to tell you that you've done this feat. I've never seen it happen, and I probably never will because it's a one in a million chance. But we'll keep at it. It's a reason to keep playing every month. See, I showed off endurance mode in a previous stream, and it did not go well. I got like three kills. It's a surprisingly different skill set. Sometimes it works out well. I tend to try and play aggressively, which is a very bad idea in endurance. It really is an endurance match. You actually have to play very carefully. I believe the way I unlock those um, endurance mode levels when I played this game initially back in the early 2000s was I, uh, I might have unlocked Minion. At least for some of them. I think I unlocked Minion first before I actually completed all of them. Uh, I also kicked it down to easy difficulty. Because I just was not good at them. Speaking of aggression, I could afford to be much more aggressive right now. I have all of the weapons that I can possibly hold. Numerous specials. 
damaged enemies all around. Let's kill everybody. Got two environmental attacks. That's free damage. Three environmental attacks. I still have a recharge station. This level is so easy. Spectre. Shooting missiles and then not moving, just standing there. Those satellites would never have landed on me. She was just going to sit there. And watch them fall. Let's show her how it's supposed to work. Look at that. Max damage. I believe all of our weapons fire from the opposite location that they do on the Sweet Tooth vehicle. Our junkyard dog here. So just, uh, remember where they came out on Sweet Tooth and do the opposite. Let's see, where is everybody? Crazy Eight's behind me. What is Crazy 8? No, that's Manslaughter. They have very similar dots on the mini-map. That is how I identify people. By dots. This whole game is secret collect to me. Little squares that look exactly like the characters they represent. The graphical fidelity shall never be matched. It is the peak of gaming. Sure, let's save the game. Um, I didn't actually plan for what I was going to do here. So, suburbs. Suburbs is my preferred level anyway. More idle threats from Billy. We're just here to hunt and kill. Billy's a simple man with a simple wish. Commit one murder. Unfortunately, this level is uh, gargantuan. So, my special that has an area of effect is probably only gonna hit one person per use. Maybe I should have thought that through a little better. It would have been much easier to corral enemies into groups in the alternate level. Oh well, this is why you have a plan. But we'll get by without it. And... Oh, I almost killed Darkseid. She pushed me away. Out of Sniper. There we go. Have I mentioned that our special is uh, really, really, really good? It turns out Junkyard Dog, for how unassuming and uninteresting the vehicle is, is one of the best vehicles in the game. This thing is a beast. Gas Can is one of the best weapons in the entire series. And it's just our special, but better. The other way around, our special is better than the Gas Can. So we are a pretty terrifying monstrosity that the AI is bad at using. So you sort of forget when you don't play as Junkyard Dog. It's actually a force to be reckoned with. Even though when you fight Junkyard Dog, 
it just sort of rams itself into a wall and then it blows up. I get a lot of free hits when Junkyard Dog is on the map. But it has plenty of maneuverability, plenty of speed, tons of armor. Nothing wrong with Junkyard Dog. Only ever appeared in uh, two vehicles, this one and 2012 which is, in many ways, a remake of this one. Actually, I tend to count Lost as a separate game. So every ge every vehicle that only appeared in Twisted Metal Black also appeared in Lost. Therefore, none of the vehicles in Black are technically unique. I think the only unique ones are Junkyard Dog, and, um, Manslaughter. They're all unique versions of themselves in this game. The likes of which are never seen anywhere else in the series. Oh, Brimstone, that's right. Close call. Yeah, I kind of speculated the Junkyard Dog might be in that first slot because good for starting players. That would certainly be a good, like, practical design choice. Same reason Sweet Tooth is in the first slot in the first game. But also, like, when I play a game, I see the default character and I immediately switch off of them. And I see that they're at the default. They are the last thing I want to play as. Perhaps I'm just the game developer's nightmare. And all the quality of life features that they put in the game, I subvert. I'm also infuriating to uh, DM in Dungeons and Dragons, so... Who wants to sign up for that job? I promise I will break your game within one session. I guess I used all my recharges. Nah, that's right, Crazy 8 unique as well. So like four unique vehicles in this game. There's actually more than most other Twisted Metals. Here I am underestimating it. There should be a mansion I can mow down back here. Knock the whole damn thing down with one touch. Get the delicious health pick up inside. You want to use my special because it's so good, and that's why I have every weapon in the game. And I can't pick up anything else right now. Completely whiffed. <laughs> Did a 90 degree turn at the last second. Knew I should have fired it off early. Not much of a loss. Um, I guess I'm gonna do the platforming. Which is really hard as Junkyard Dog. This is the level I played in the Let's Play with Junkyard Dog. So again, probably should have taken the alternate choice. But it's fine. We will see the alternate level of the bonus content. I wonder if I can make this. I certainly cannot. I don't have the acceleration for it. Can't die with all these weapons. Gotta get rid of them. I have surprisingly few good weapons, despite having all the weapons. Picked up a ton of, like, homing missiles that are not very impressive. So that was actually not that big of a loss. Not as bad as it could have been.
weapon pickups respawn at like exactly the rate you would want them to. It is really hard to find a perfect balance. I definitely think the earlier Twisted Metal games do not nail that balance at all. And head on, it might actually be too fast. Maybe. If it is, it's by like the tiniest margin, but it's that hard to nail the balance. It's screwed up in both directions. Death would be the fastest way to reload my ammo at this point. But the enemies are like no HP. Don't take much to kill them. I'm surprised Mr. Grim didn't just get right over by me there. There we go. We don't even get to hear the uh, one enemy left music. This time I do have a plan. We're going to downtown. As I always say, this is my least favorite level in the game. I am going to change that this time. And Billy's going to get a taste for killing. So this was mentioned the last time I streamed this game. I... Connor Rose, I believe. Hopefully I'm not miscrediting them, but... Uh, Whatever it was, I'd never heard it before. And it's pretty important, so let's go for it. Let's try this. Okay. That clearly broke the things around. Fuel tank. That breaks the fuel tank. Rolls into a building. Knocks it down with the most slowdown that Twisted Metal Black is capable of experiencing. Cutting the frame rate down to like a quarter of what it ought to be. But that building was full of power missiles. It was ready to fall down. Can't believe I never showed that off before. Can't believe I never knew about that. And that one's much easier to break. Don't even have to, like, do a jump. I've never been able to line up the shot for, like, gas cans and stuff with the other one. But Adam Bank is just begging to be knocked over. And it's full of health refills. Demonstrating its greater ability to stay standing. And now we have a lot of very, very powerful weapons. Literally powerful. They're called power. Supposedly, you're supposed to do that from standing on top of the building that has the bridge in between the two buildings and then uh, sniping the gas cans from there. Also, counterintuitively, only the fuel tanks that have no red light on top are the ones you need to hit. To knock down the buildings. That's a really cool secret. And now the power missiles are respawning here. I don't think the health refills will respawn, but we'll see. Because we're still right at the very beginning of the level. We will glean as much information as we can about these collapsed buildings. And yet another secret that I somehow didn't know about in this absurdly dense game. This one's fairly well known, and not all that secret if you know about the Black Cube in the alternate level, the uh, Highway Loop. Because that also requires you to leap over a wall and shoot a uh, big spherical gas tank. And then it will roll off somewhere, blow up a specific spot, get you some magical prizes. So then you just translate that knowledge to this level. Our power missiles knock people back, allowing us to hit with multiple power missiles. 
And we can snipe him with our fantastic special. I normally don't fire gas cans from any sort of distance. Because I need that bullseye bonus. But with this special, I can use it to its fullest potential. Because as far as I know, bullseyes are impossible. Even if they are possible, I don't need them. They stand just so high. We might see a health respawn over at Adam Bank. Now that it has been knocked down. We'll pass by again. We have Dark Side to kill. That's gonna take a super long time. Dark Side froze me, and then immediately unfroze me. So I'm hurt at her. Dominant enough now. Just look at no vacancy hotel. Could have at least called it like Midtown Hotel. But no, it's the Nameless Hotel, which happens to have no vacancy. This level always takes a long time. It takes a shorter period of time. Now that I have knocked down those buildings. So I can spam these. Hey, health refill. Look at that. I have so many power missiles, I can just crush anybody with nothing but. Just gotta line up one shot and then they sort of get stun locked in a weird way. The way like no other weapon Twisted Metal Black actually does. Of course it would be Warthog. The one guy who could survive a hit when he was that low on HP. Uh, let's try and get this health refill. Why is that building bloody? Blood smears all over the walls and the roof. What was going on in this building before Twisted Metal got here? Because I didn't do that. I knocked that wall down. Uh, Slumber Tower, but the BER is uh, flashing in and out. So it's Slum Tower. That's more clever. That's what I was looking for. And immediately die. I don't know who got me, but pretty impressive. So, back on track, basically. I can actually use real gas cans for a change. Like that. Join your followers in explosive death. Now, Midtown, it's not specific what it's supposed to be a parody of. My best guess is like Detroit, or some other Rust Belt place. But it is pretty clearly in severe decline. To the point of being virtually uninhabitable. I wouldn't mind a health refill, but it's not forthcoming. Um, gas cans. I dropped it on myself. That didn't help anybody. Yep, this is definitely Carcer City. That would have been the crossover of a lifetime. Let's check the knockdown buildings, which are right past the 
buildings with the sky bridge. This is actually looking a bit close because of roadkill. Who could one hit kill me at this point? And may have done so in the past. Okay, there we go. I overshot the health refill. Burned on my uh, rear view mirror for no reason. There we go. And there's exactly what Roadkill does. One hit kills ya. Ah well. Let's watch it all again. So not only is this level easy, but sometimes you gotta repeat it. Kinda lost focus there. And I got road killed. Can't shield that special. Once it hits you, you're hit. Spam and zoomies, that's not even possible. You can only hold one of those. But we all know the AI cheats, that's not news. What was that? That's the tree. Flopped all around. Now, Dark Side should be a really terrifying threat. But in pretty much all of its appearances, it just goes right for the throat. It has no way to back it up. Poor thing is constantly just not a threat. Basically suicidal. Yeah, that was a waste. Let's launch the helicopter attack. Hasn't done anything yet. Maybe it'll do something now. Yeah, the helicopter's up above that bridge. Firing downward. Accomplishing nothing. One of the least interesting of the environmental attacks in the whole game. Sweet to dodging both the freeze and... Uh, gas can... Dodging it all. Trying to use my shield. Of course. It's always too late to use your shield. I don't know why I bother. Feels good. But non lethal. That's what we want to see. get too close for the satellites to actually hit me. Enemies don't really time the attack. Oh, there's a health refill down here. I forgot about that one. That might have saved me last time. Probably not. I got super overkilled by roadkill. Hey, another one down. Get our health refills. Did I use both my recharges? Minimap says so, but I might just be too far away from where the recharge stations are. That would be good information to have. So apparently I did. Whoosh. It's nothing but a ramp now. Huge whiff. Whoa, I thought he was, uh, 
just given up there. But Warthog managed to kill me. It seemed like he didn't stand a chance. From where I was sitting. There's Brimstone. Making the same mistakes again. Still alive? Yeah. With a sliver of health. That got him. A bunch of attacks coming my way. No big deal. Just enjoy those motor sounds, which seem much louder than they were a second ago. And go for this. Even when I'm stopped, my motor sounds like it's on fire. As it might be. I think someone stole one of them. One of the health refills. Shadow's basically uninjured. One missile managed to hit her. Counted seven, but it was hitting the traffic. Which apparently adds to the 10 out of 10 count. Sweet Two's still alive. I think. Yeah, you're about dead. And Roadkill is probably also uninjured. Again. It's been hanging back, letting everyone else do the dirty work this whole playthrough. There are a lot of interesting and intentional ambient noises laid over the soundtrack in every level. This is not one of them. This appears to just be a glitch that we're experiencing. This being the PS3 version, I've noticed way more glitches than I ever experienced on actual console. I did the entire Let's Play on a PS2. It was kind of a uh, beautiful. Because that game is basically flawless. For a near launch title. These developers tend to do that. Launch right near the beginning of a console cycle for the PlayStation. And make one of the best games of the entire console. And then be completely unable to follow it up. Although, in the case of Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal 2 was much better. So, that's actually a really good job following it up. And I'm completely wrong in my observation. Maybe I was talking about Warhawk. Which is a really good launch title. Near launch title for the PS1. Made by many of the same developers as Twisted Metal. So I said weapon respawns are pretty much perfect. And even at the time, I was going to add the caveat that health respawns are far from perfect. They are very, very, very infrequent. That's what I expected to see. Let's start by killing Shadow. I might have had enough specials to take her out last time. Now, 
I need lots of weapons. Hi, dark side. Playing like this is Twisted Metal 1, I see. Freeze me and run away. There we go. 10 out of 10. The judges give it a perfect score. Touch that tree. Almost flipped over. You never want to touch that tree. So I did feel that blowing up the gas tanks to reveal the secret areas made this level better. But the act of doing it cost me so much health that it sort of got me killed the first time. Didn't save me the second time. So maybe this is still my least favorite level. Ah, damn you, outlaw. I feel like the AI has perfect acceleration on every vehicle. It always seems like they can surge forward in an instant. With no warning. No matter how well you line up your shot. They will just dodge. They've got a dodge button. Playing Dark Souls out here. The special might have done reduced damage for the fact that it was uh, fired midair accidentally. It was Dark Side special I'm talking about. Our helicopter environmental attack doing nothing. Let's fire it again. Seems to be a bunch of enemies out there. Will it hit any of them? Yes, Sweet Tooth got shot a few times. And then that building really got what was coming to it. And yeah, Dark Side Special in particular. The damage values make no sense to me. I talked about it in the Let's Play years ago. I was told there was some kind of discernible logic to it, but I still can't wrap my head around it. It makes playing as Dark Side very difficult. The incredibly specific things you have to do to accomplish anything. So I'm both looking forward to and dreading my eventual Dark Side playthrough, because Dark Side is one of my favorite characters to play as. But I find it extremely hard to do anything as Darkseid. Very fun, but very difficult for me. And the armor doesn't end up being strong enough to make up for the relative inability to do damage compared to a lot of what I'm used to. Everyone just spinning wildly. Dark side has an excuse for immediate perfect uh, acceleration. It's her special. The AI is constantly spamming that special. Yep. Swerving perfectly out of all my homing missiles. What even is homing? This is probably going to hit the terrain. Okay, it converged perfectly so as to land immediately behind Shadow. That's the reticle I know and love. There, two kills. 
price of one. Brimstone didn't stand a chance. This is what I expect from Roadkill. Ro Junkyard Dog. What I expect from Roadkill is to come and snipe me to death right now. But... I think that might have been Outlaw? Who did that? Yeah. Should have killed you way sooner. Now for my war mortal foe. A one-on-one -on -one showdown. This is what endurance mode is like. When you play it irresponsibly like I do. Just stand here, hold the machine gun button. Somehow I got electrocuted there. Doesn't matter. Neither of us using our weapons, just machine guns. Who cares at this point? Here. You can have one missile. Get out of here. Don't come back. Hey, boss fight. This is Minion. I have no plan for how to beat Minion as well. But... Billy Ray ain't scared of nothing. Let's see how justified his lack of fear is. That was the rear panel that I really went to town on there. I'm out of weapons. I hit a lot of panels a lot of times. I think we're off to a good start. What he got for me? Shield destroyed. Yeah, I broke everything during that first uh, rush. That is some good news. Got some gas cans, I got a special. All ready for minion. Let's get this. Not that. Use power missiles, why not? Meant to use a shield, probably should have done it a little more proactively. But maybe not. Plenty of resources to burn. And be burned. There. Finally got a shield to go off. I'll do the machine gun method with you too. Roadkill, minion, I don't care. I'll kill them all with a machine gun. There. Billy Ray had nothing to fear. Except dying twice. <laughs> Which is no problem for him. When I passed out in my truck, I dreamed about the farm. I guess I must have been thinking back to the day when everything went wrong. I remember it so well. We was two weeks from harvest. I was checking out the crop when I heard this noise up in the air. There were no dust and schedule that afternoon. I hollered for the guy to stop, but it just kept coming. I didn't know what was happening at first. I couldn't breathe, and my heart was beating so fast, thank the Lord, I passed out real quick. I thought I was dead. I must have been out for hours, and when I woke up, well, my God. What had happened to me? My first thought was to get home to Annie. She was real smart. She'd figure out what to do. But when I got there, I guess she'd already figured out something else. I heard them laughing, talking about how they'd go the next week, try to collect the life insurance. 
everything hurt. My face, my mind, my heart. I remember grabbing for the closest thing I could find. I just lost it. I'd hunt that pilot down sooner or later. But for now, it was strictly between me and Adam. I've been hitting Annie's body for well over an hour. You couldn't even tell who she was no more. There's a man out there who took my wife and turned me into a freak. When I win this contest, he's gonna pay for what he done. I guess that was a plausible deniability assassination attempt by the pilot and uh, Annie. Just spray him with pesticide while he was out in the field. You could argue it wasn't murder. There's got to be better ways to do it. No one would investigate a hillbilly dying of cyanide poisoning or something. What did I unlock? Oh, the middle cutscene. Sure, save that. I don't think Billy Ray's story is very good in the grand scheme of stories in Twisted Metal Black. I do think it is very, very well presented. Because, like, all he did was kill his wife in a rage. Which, compared to some of the other characters, is actually kind of uninteresting. It says a lot about the other characters, really, but... It's on the low side of Twisted Metal Black stories. Yet, that kill is made incredibly visceral with the way he just keeps swinging faster and faster with a slowly growing smile on his face. Very creepy. Subtle way of uh, building the character. The mutation of Billy Ray Stillwell is not very extreme, actually. I never really thought of him as mutated until I saw that middle cutscene. Otherwise, he looks like just kind of a moderately ugly dude. But I've seen worse mutations of supposed hillbillies in other mediums. Since that was what they were going for, they probably could have gone a little further. They certainly did with no face. They went to the utmost extreme. One or two more steps might have been good. They pretty much just gave him a nose job and a leno chin and called it a day. But that's enough to turn him into a killing machine monster. He must have had a lot of practice as a farmer before he became a hobbyist murderer. Because, yeah, he could hack all day with that hoe and any other gardening implement he could get his hands on, I bet. Die, Grim. Should have landed that scythe. Wouldn't have stopped me, but it would have slowed me down. Actually, the knockback on the scythe is surprisingly effective at throwing off my aim. I've had plenty of sure things completely destroyed by getting hit once by Mr. Grimm. Dark side living surprisingly long. She was in the cell with us. Is still alive. How can this be? Both of those probably missed. <laughs> yeah, our story is kind of Axel-ish. The way Axel is also a sad wife guy. 
Although ironically, he didn't kill his wife and does blame himself for her death. This guy is exactly the opposite. Killed his wife, but it's everyone else's fault. Sweet down. Roadkill is somewhere about to explode. This level normally takes way longer, but it's going well so far. And those are some famous last words I just uttered. Okay, Axel's also about to die. So we effectively have three enemies left. But the tiny slivers of health on the remaining enemies are gonna cost me a lot as I try to whittle them down to nothing. Here we go, and Axel. Ah, direct hit with my special. Maybe I finished off Dark Side. Haven't seen it in a while. Okay, there's two green dots. Dark Side's definitely alive somewhere. And maybe Roadkill? Yep, gonna need that. Indeed. I've never had such a hard time with navigation in this game. The controls are so good, the best in the entire series. how well you can, like, grab something that's right next to you. Precisely aim yourself towards the things you need to grab. Those are little things you take for granted now, and it's because of Black. Before Black, those things were all arduous tasks. Might take the rest of your life to get a pickup that is right next to you. Gigantic level. Can't find anybody to kill. That looks like roadkill. Of course it's roadkill. Half my health is gone. As soon as I encounter a roadkill. Darkseid's got more health than I remember. She might have gotten a refill. Oh, I was going for the bullseye. all teamed up. Sick of me doing so well. Spawned right on top of a health pickup. Which might have been useful later on. This level has a ton of health refills though. Usually in groups of two. In extremely disparate parts of the level. Two health refills is what you need to actually accomplish anything. One is basically nothing. Oh, right, right over his head. That's what should have happened. I suspect our special might work the way that um, gas cans work in uh, the extra twisted edition of Head On. Which is, they always do maximum damage. Because it seems like any time anyone is within the blast radius of our special, they seem to take the same amount of damage. Where with a gas can, it diminishes the further the way, the way they get from the center of the blast radius. Down to practically nothing if they just barely are on the outskirts. You can tell they do get hit, because they bounce upwards. But their HP bar barely moves. Damn it, Roadkill. How are you always behind me? There. My Goomba stopped your ass. Thought I was frozen still, so I threw a gas can in the middle of nowhere. But I got through it anyway. Uh, you know what? 
I never do the drive-in movie. Haven't done it since uh, Warthog. We're doing the drive-in movie. I like the odds. This big old monster of a vehicle. This sort of car is uncommonly capable of handling the drive-in movie. If for no other reason than our special, it's a very wide area. And there are a lot of enemies concentrated in a small area. So we will often get multiple hits with our special. Like I said, they're pretty much always max damage hits. We can blow huge chunks out of the total enemy health pool all at once, very frequently. In case you missed the bonus videos, me, my wet and fat, me, my net and fat, and super femme are playing at the drive in theater. Still no idea what me, my net, and fat might be. But hey, if you're missing those bonus videos, they're all on Twitch. Keep them archived. And there is at this point like four and a half hours of bonus videos. Twisted Metal gameplay that uh, I did not upload to YouTube. And it'll break five hours today when I play the remaining levels that I didn't play during this campaign. Highly recommended viewing material. And I've played through the drive-in theater with every character that I've streamed so far. So if you have missed the drive-in theater, there are several more playthroughs of it. And I just knocked down the movie screen. No one's watching me, my net, and fat anymore. A lot of people are at critical health. I'm about to explode, though. Radical is not going to help me. I don't see myself ever getting a chance to use it. And there, I used it. Do nothing. Yeah, me, my net, and fat is such a, like, non-joke. It really melts the mind to even just say that sequence of words. Like, the way your jaw moves, even, it kind of hurts. Not in a physical way, in, like, your soul. I can't even describe it, but say it out loud. Me, my net, and fat. So nonsensical body just doesn't want to do it. Zoom, he couldn't pick a target. What else is new? Not even going for direct hits with the gas can anymore. I'm so used to using my special. It's a pretty severe error. Because direct hits are where all the value is for the gas can. Well, I got the health refill. Immediately lost it, and then immediately exploded. I gotta say, I also miss Manslaughter. Because he's an extremely easy opponent to kill. I could use a break at this point. Okay, that's not a break. That is 10,000 degree spin. 
We'll have a lot of points to Tony Hawk. Not going to get us very far in Twisted Metal. Oh, he got me. He died there. Two people died. I don't know who the second one was. So they will not be missed. But my odds of making it through are pretty slim. There's still some green health enemies out there. And I just threw my special into the ground. Okay, no one's green health. But a lot of people are red. And I whiffed my power missile. And I missed that that I needed. There we go. There's that foregone conclusion. I promise this level is not actually that hard for this vehicle. But getting into one shot is still a pretty tall order. A tall order that I actually did in practice. I did one practice run of this level and it was successful. That was enough to convince me to route it into the main playthrough. But I didn't expect to get it in one during the main playthrough. I always play worse when I'm recording. Well, let's see. Hey, manslaughter. Good to see you, big guy. Just stay there and be useless. Drop bunches of rocks on your own teammates. Hurry this up for me. Satellite, sure. It's like a baked potato. Even if I don't see a target, I might throw the satellite up in the air. Because when it lands, who knows? It's a Mitch Hedberg joke about how long it takes to make a baked potato. Uh, Manslaughter special was amplified in Twisted Metal Lost. Because uh, individual hits were made much more powerful. So Manslaughter's special can do like 50 damage in a single usage. And uh, most uh, vehicles only have like 75 HP. Maybe 100. It basically one-shots Mr. Grimm. So I think Manslaughter is like way, way, way better than Twisted Metal Lost. Which is the only place that I've ever showed off Manslaughter. Someday that'll change. Probably. Good dodge there. Roadkill. Dodging all of my attempts to kill him. Naturally. Roadkill is almost always the first one dead or the last one dead. So I think he's in it for the long haul this time as well. Just like every time. There we go. That was definitely the red missile of Roadkill. Firing from like half the map away. If he weren't the AI, that would have gone for one of the enemy vehicles. But no, it went directly for me. Ignoring, like, three potential targets just to get to me. Manslaughter is the least deserving of my ammunition. He's got to go, but he really does not pose any sort of threat. And those are some famous last words. He's definitely going to kill me now for my hubris. 
Oh, her special. She started it in midair, and then when she landed, she shot off like a bullet. I don't think I've ever seen that specifically. No way I really could have prepared for it. That all happened in like half a second, so can't do much with that information. Manslaughter is just being a big ammunition sponge, really. Okay, roadkill, get the hell out of here. Why do you have one HP? I should have been dead there, but as you can see, I managed to activate my shield at the last second. Like I always try to do. I was completely engulfed in explosions and I just drove out of there. There's a movie called I Am Number Four, I think. No one remembers it because it was really bad. But it had a scene where they were doing the generic, like, good guys don't look at explosions thing with one of the characters. She's walking away from a building that she just blew up. And it's clearly exploding so fast that it's going to catch up with her. And it does. It overtakes her. And as it hits her, she activates her magical power, which they hadn't revealed that she had yet. It, she becomes invincible and just allows the explosion to engulf her while she's shielded. And it's actually like a really clever use. The cool guys don't look at explosion things. Really the only good clever use I've ever seen of that increasingly obnoxious trope. It still kind of persists today. And that is the one reason for that movie to have existed. Multiple hits. Oh, I thought everyone died in one shot. Close enough. So that went well. Two tries to get through the drive-in movie. It can certainly go a lot worse. This whole run has gone fine. Do not try to push the other cars to their death. That is not what we are good at. Gonna regret not taking down that billboard. I do every time. You know what? There it is. Thank you, whoever did that. Yellow jacket. Didn't even see ya. Really thought Sweet Tooth would have used his special there. That's usually what he does when you're pinned bumper to bumper. But no, everybody just wants to use machine guns get me in that situation that really benefits the AI. They're not taking advantage. This run would actually be going a lot worse if the enemies used everything at their disposal the way they normally do. On hard mode, they probably would. Uh, got the help refill over there. And there's Roadkill. Road killing it up. Probably charging a special right now. I was gonna go for a freeze while he was uh, platforming, which would have killed him, but uh, one in a million chance there. Turns out you cannot jump over Shadow Special, it explodes upwards in a cone. Everyone's frozen. That might have been a, um, I forget what it's called. But there's a specific thing that happens. Cheap shot. If you freeze someone who is already frozen, the game punishes you 
by hitting you with a cheap shot. So you instantly get frozen yourself instead of the target. And the only way to have this happen is if someone else freezes the target. So I don't know why cheap shots even exist. But they do, and you gotta watch out for them. And I think two AI opponents tried to freeze me at the same time. And that's why Crazy 8 ended up frozen. I've never been able to, like, do a freeze shot myself. So I don't use the freeze very often. I try to. It just, uh, goes through the enemy. And someone jumped off the building. Outlaw. Good riddance. Crazy 8 down. People want a manslaughter emote. I don't even know what that would be. It's like the vehicle itself. <laughs> um, a bondage hood to represent its driver black. Maybe if I, if I could get like a good shot of the grill of manslaughter. That would make a nice big square. About the only thing that would look decent as an emote. But it would really just look like the grill of a gigantic truck. Road kills being road kill. Somehow not dying. Special Good to use Spectre killed herself. Everyone's killing themselves this time. If everyone jumped off the rooftops, would you? I honestly thought I might have jumped off there. Which would have been funny. But bad for my chances of victory. Although ultimately it would not have mattered. Because I died anyway seconds later. Oh yeah, I could do half of Black's face from the loading screen. That would also be a pretty good emote. I mean, no one would know what the fuck it even was. Because who gives a shit about the character Black? Not even, like, Manslaughter's fans. Because Black is a legitimate non-entity. But, that would be among the few ways to pay tribute to that awful vehicle that I hate. There we go, there's a victim. I could try and push her into the fans that are in uh, each of these holes. I don't have to demonstrate that because I jumped into those holes one time. Okay, we got two uninjured enemies. Effectively uninjured. They might push each other off the building. Let's hope. There's a health refill up here somewhere. I always forget where. There we go. Right out in the open. Uh, someone did die while I was going and getting that health refill. And I don't know how. I don't even know who died. I don't miss him. Yellow jacket destroyed. Me too. Hooray. <laughs> no survivors. And yet, we move on to the final boss. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. I would have a pretty hard time making an emote of my own spite. But if I could, I would. Trust me on that.
Apparently, my own spite is the driver of manslaughter, according to the chat right now. Can't fully disagree. Since the actual driver of manslaughter is nothing. Therefore, anything you want to imagine as the driver is accurate. So here's Warhawk. I recently played through the game, in which he derives his title. I highly recommend watching that playthrough. As it turns out, Warhawk is uh, really, really good. Boss isn't treating me very well right now. Punishing me for mistaking it as the strange futuristic VTOL from that 1995 game. But, uh, we'll get this thing killed one way or another. It might be a game over here, because this is going so poorly to start off with. This fuel tanker is not doing what I need it to do. There. Finally. That is normally not so hard. I think I've one-shot this boss with every preceding character. At least during the streams. But I normally have no trouble here at all. Today, trouble. Honestly, this whole run has been giving me much more trouble than I expected. In practice, this was all effortless. I beat the downtown level with a life to spare. Once that shield's gone... Oh, you blew up my... Anchor. It was in the perfect spot. Why? And how? And what? And Warhawk left. Probably gonna blow up my perfectly placed tanker again. There we go. I have a satellite prepared for just such an occasion. I think our special will also be very good for dealing with this. Let's try this. Nope, our special did not work there. Maybe up here? Yeah, that did it. Uh, my health is dwindling way too rapidly. Snipe me inside the bunker. There's no health refills. There's a weapon. Satellite. I went for my shield. Did not go off. Ah, well. So, we gotta do it all again. Get some weapons and then hide. Takes way too long for the attackers to show up. Someone pointed out in the comments that the way the tankers, or the way Warhawk has an impenetrable shield is sort of like how in the video game Warhawk, your player vehicle has a shield that you have to, uh, the enemies have to whittle down before they can actually harm you. Certainly a possible inspiration. Oh my god, this tanker. I've never seen the tankers behave this poorly. I mean, I have. But it's been a long time. 
can't believe I got the shield there. I'm glad I did. That's the meat tenderizer attack. Where Warhawk tries to sweep you off the building. Now, I've never seen the meat tenderizer attack work. But if it does work, it's a one-hit kill. Because you get swept off the building. There we go. Much faster this time. Speed was not really the issue, but this is the easier phase of the fight. Because all we gotta do is fight the helicopter right through the wall. Satellite attack. Best possible thing we could have. It's definitely not low enough to get hit by a special. Right, shoot it the way we shot down the airliner an hour and a half ago. Over the meat tenderizer again. Good luck with that. Go, get on your perch. Yeah, when he's doing the ricochet attack thing, that's when he's susceptible to specials. One more satellite, and there it is. We're probably all set. All set. <laughs> more hydration required. Both my hands are occupied. Not really. We're doing nothing right now. Yep. There it is. Accept your demise. A bit more difficult than I expected, but we're through it. Time to kill another pilot. I'd won the contest, and now it was my turn to collect. I went to see Calypso, and just as promised, he delivered the goods. I knew right from the start, he'd get me the revenge I was craving. When we went back to the farm, Calypso said he had a little surprise for me. Somehow he'd done it. He'd found that bastard who made me kill Annie. Son of a bitch even brought his plane with him. Calypso said all I had to do to get my prize was step aboard. It was a one-way ticket to my heart's desire. That pilot had taken everything from me. It was right time he learned how it felt. It may have been only the second time I killed someone, but it felt so damn good. I think I was beginning to see my true calling, so I done gave up farming and moved into the city. In a place like that, well, who knows what kind of trouble an old redneck like me could get into. He became everything he hates. A guy who kills people using a plane. But he, uh, got his wish. He killed that pilot. The day is saved. He is now an aspiring serial killer. But he's got to get at least three kills before he becomes legally a serial killer. That's not actually true anymore. You can now be a serial killer with at least two kills, but... One kill and doesn't count. And the fact that his two kills had extremely different uh, modus operandi does sort of make him not a serial killer yet. And we learn in Twisted Metal Lost, he never becomes a serial killer. He doesn't kill anyone else for an entire decade. Then he rejoins Twisted Metal and racks up some contestant kills. He didn't give himself any credit for killing the other contestants in Twisted Metal. Selling himself short. 
had one hell of a vehicle. Junkyard Dog, I've always underestimated it. It's very strong. Very fun. And uh, I did not do it justice here in this playthrough, but that is how it goes. We'll have the bonus videos, more playthroughs of the levels I missed coming right up. Stay tuned if you want to see that. But I'm going to take a little break, get some more water that I clearly desperately need. I am Feedly, and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.